We are the church where everybody is somebody. And Jesus Christ is all. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so glad to see each and every one of you on this new year. God is so good. God is so awesome. And God is getting ready to do something real, 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 real big right here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We just want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. We have Sunday school each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. We have worship service at 10 o'clock a.m. And our doors are always open, so each of you are welcome. But if you just want to sit at home, you can find us on our um, Facebook Live. And then if you miss that, we are on our YouTube, and that's Mount Lebanon, Macon, Georgia. And you can also catch us on 107.9, which is the radio station. I just want to say I am glad to see each and every one of you. And I ask that you continue to pray for um, Sister Bella Washington. I was told that she had to go back to the ER on last night, but she is home resting. So continue to pray for her. Uh, Brother Roundtree, he is also at home. He's resting and he's doing well. So we're asking that you keep him lifted up in prayer because he was in the hospital as well. And pray for each and every one of our members. Sister Joanne, why she's at home battling a cold because it's that time of the year, it's that season. So we're just going to keep everybody lifted up in prayer. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for your prayers, just for this Mount Lebanon family. So y'all, okay, we're in a brand new year. So I got two words for this year, and that's new and that's big. And new because we're not carrying over that old mess from last year. We're doing a new thing. New opportunity, new beginning, new hope. So we're not worried about what we didn't do last year because we're starting new. And then y'all, I already tell y'all, and it's gonna be big. And it's going to be big because that's the acronym in believing in God. God can do all things. So we're just going to believe in God to do everything that we're asking. And with that being said, y'all, we are late. We are very late. But we are coming up on our pastor and first lady 25th pastor anniversary. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. I'm talking about this man who's been working right here at Mount Lebanon in this video for 20 and there will be a celebration. So I'm asking each and every one of you, anybody who have any ideas, anything that you want to do, we will let our pastor and our first lady know that we love them and we appreciate them. And y'all know I always say, love is not what you say. It's it is what, what you do. do. And I know y'all probably be mad, but yeah, we're going to go into our pocketbook and we're going to bless the man of God. So y'all just get ready to just celebrate our pastor and our first lady on the 25th pastor anniversary. I'm thinking about a prayer breakfast, so I'm thinking the fourth Saturday of this month, y'all, we're going to make it happen. And if you're going to have any negative vibes, keep that to yourself. Amen. If you want to help me, come Amen. on and just get jump on board. Because we're going to make things happen this year. And I'm just believing it, and I'm just putting it out there. So we, if each and every one of us do a part, we can make it happen. So I'm thinking prayer breakfast. For Sunday, don't worry about the heat. We can have the worship right here in the sanctuary, and we can do the food in the back. That always, God always make provision for us to get things done. So if everybody would just help me, join with me, and we're gonna make this the best pastor anniversary, 25 years. That is something, something to celebrate about. So we are gonna celebrate him, and we're gonna celebrate our first lady. Also, we still have our raffle tickets. If you would like to purchase a raffle ticket. See Sister Dora selling they are $3. We're wrapping up the television and other gifts. And let me not forget, we are selling ads. And if you want to do an ad for our, for the book, see First Lady Mary's Causeway and Sister Cynthia Causeway to purchase your ad. We are going full force because I love my pastor and my first lady. I love our pastor and our first lady. So we're going to make sure that they feel loved and they know that they are loved. So these are the announcements. Continue to pray. And we're now turning over our tithes and offerings. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Amen. This is the day that the thank you God has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. The devil tried to keep the lights on. Ain't God good? <laughs> but I can preach the lights on the lights on. It doesn't really matter. But we're glad to see each one of you as always. So glad that you chose to come out and worship with us and praise God. And we certainly want to... Uh, Recognize our senior Deacon Solomon Bay. Raise your hand, Deacon. 
that clap in that amen. Give him some of my name. 101, 102 is still going strong. Amen. And New Year, as they were just saying it now, we ain't gone. So we ought to act like we're grateful because it's only by the God's mercy and His grace that we are certainly gathered here today. So we thank you for being here. And we are uh, the officers. Uh, we are preparing ourselves for the giving of our tithes and offerings and that the officers will come forward. You have heard the names of uh, Deborah Ford, uh, Sister Washington, and, and so many others. You know the names, so we will call them as we come to the altar for prayer. After the uh, offering has been lifted, uh, at this time we will turn over to the deacons for the giving of our tithes and offering. Free to give, free to receive the Lord love and sure for giving. Our Father, we want to thank you for this offering that we are about to receive. We have to bless it with it both. Bless it, bless it, you can, Father, so that we can continue to help you. This all this.
gathered around your throne of grace. First of all, Lord, we just want to tell you thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, we thank you, God, for bringing us to a brand new year, Lord. We thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing right now, Lord. Give the praise, honor, and glory for what you're getting ready to do, Lord. We know you're getting ready to move in a mighty, mighty way, Lord. We just want to tell you thank you in advance, oh, Father God. Lord, there's somebody right now, Lord, gathered around your altar, oh, Father God. Their heart is broken, oh, Father God. Lord, but we know that you are close to the broken heart. And Lord, we ask that you please touch them right now, oh, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, oh, God, for allowing us to see this brand new year, oh, Father God. Thank you, God, for this new season, oh, Father God. Lord, we thank you for new beginnings, new hopes, and new dreams, oh, Father God. You say old things are passed away, the old, all things become new. Lord, creating us a new spirit, oh, Father God. We need a new mindset today to move forward, oh, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you, oh, God. Lord, we trust you right now, oh, Father God, with all our heart, Lord, and we lean not to our own understanding. You know your children want to figure everything out. We want to understand everything, oh, Father God, but we know that your will is not our will. Your ways are not our ways. Your plans are not our plans, Lord, so we trust you today, God. Lord, we acknowledge you and think about you in all our ways, knowing that you shall direct our path. We thank you for your direction. We thank you for your guidance, oh, Father God. We thank you, God, for loving each and every one of us so much, Lord, that you look past each and every one of our faults and you saw our needs, Lord. Thank you for your unfailing, your undoubted love that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we thank you for that eternal life, oh, Father God. Lord, we just thank you because even when we don't feel good, Lord, we know that it's all good. It's all God because all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Lord, we thank you, God, for creating each and every one of us. We are your masterpiece. And God, you did not create any junk. So we just thank you right now, oh Father God, for making us, Lord, in your own image. We were fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, oh Father God and Lord. I speak Jeremiah 29, 11 over everybody who's gathered right here. I want you to let them know that there is a plan, oh Father God. And Lord, we'll just lift our, our purpose, Lord. And we're standing on your promises, oh Father God. Because we know that you are God and you can do all things. But, Lord, you cannot and you will not fail. And we thank you right now, God. And, Lord, we ask that you continue, Lord, to touch the sick and the shut in. Bless those who are bereaved today, oh, Father God. Somebody down around this altar, Lord, their heart is crying out, oh, Father God. They have need some comfort. Wrap your arms around them, oh, Father God. Let them know that you are ever present, oh, Father God. Let them know to cast their cares upon you because you care for each and every one of us. And, Lord, we thank you right now, oh, Father God. Lord, we ask that you please, oh, Father God, this oil that resides in us, Lord, this oil is not cheap. Let us, Lord, operate in the oil that you have put in us, oh, Father God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in the inside of us, our comforter and our God, oh, Father God. Thank you for being ever-present right here and right now, oh, Father God. You are right here with us. Thank you for all the provisions that you make for us, oh, Father God. Lord, you are not short on any of your promises, y'all. If God said it, that settles it. So kind of done right now. And Lord, I thank you right now, oh, Father God, because you are a man of your word, and your word should not return back to you void, oh, Father God. You are a way maker. You keep making a way out of no way, oh, Father God. Lord, we thank you because you're a miracle worker, miracle signs and wonder right now, oh, Father God. We're walking over the under. We're walking on our open heaven right now. Lord, healing is available. Joy is available. Love is available. Peace is available. Lord, we ask that you please, Lord, rain down on us with God. Lord, we need for you to saturate us in your blessings, oh, Father God. And Lord, when we get through toiling down here, Lord, and it's all said and done, Lord, we ask that you please, Lord, give our soul a little resting place, Lord. Somewhere out the yonder, oh, Father God, where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. And Lord, we just thank you right now for that prepared place, oh, Father God. Lord, we ask that you allow us to go forth, Lord. Today is a new day, a new beginning, a new hope. Thank you, God, for what you're doing right here, right now, at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. I ask that you bless us collectively and take the time out to bless each and every one of us one by one, Lord. Lord, restore us, oh, Father God. Rejuvenate us, God. Refresh us, oh, Father God. Lord, let us stand firm on your word, oh, God. And, Lord, we just thank you, oh, Father God. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. It all belongs to you. These blessings. And all blessings I ask for you to receive.
receive your son. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God, Lord. Continue to have your way, Lord. And it is so. And it is so. It is yes and amen all year long, y'all. Just believe it. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. It's light shine. 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 It's light Verses 1 through 7, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Reading from the original King James text. And it reads as follows Paul, 
an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers day, night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Thank you, you may be seated. Those verses in mind, and perhaps other passages of scripture as we are led by God's Spirit. One focus on uh, verses 6 and 7. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. A part of verse 6, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. I want to talk very briefly this morning from the subject, Keep the Fire Burning. In this last epistle that this great apostle writes, his last letter, he writes to the young minister, Timothy, who desperately needed his mentor to impart wise counsel unto him. You see, Paul had left Timothy, the young minister, in charge of the ministry at Ephesus, and things are not gone as Paul or Timothy expected. Folks stop coming to church, with put any money in church, serious arguments among the leadership. All right, all right. Some of the bullies were talking bad about Timothy, intimidate the young preacher. And I'm pretty sure that Timothy was thinking about finding another occupation. So just like he always does, God stepped in right on time and put this letter on the heart of Paul to write to this young minister, God is still in control. That's what I'm driven now. And he wrote words of encouragement, words of reassurance, and words of instruction to let this young preacher know that the wind may blow and the storm may howl, but God is still in control. And so it is with the church today. There are so many unforgettable quotes that are in this final letter that Paul wrote. He says in the text I just read, stir up the gift. Later on, he would say, tell Timothy, preach the word. Be instant. In season, out of season. Later on, he would write, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Then he would say, come on, before winter. And there are so many other strong hopes that will help people for generations and have helped people for generations. And he spoke to the heart of this young minister and even as he speaks to the church today. So y'all not be surprised about what you're witnessing. These times will come before Christ come back. But what we have to do is stay focused on God's work. Stay in God's will and abide in God's word. So in the context of a valley of discouragement, the Lord uses the Apostle Paul to speak into Timothy words of affirmation and principle, words that endure throughout generations. Paul understood 
that the ministry of the gospel is no place for a timid soul who lacks enthusiasm. All right, all right. Don't get in the ministry if you're afraid about the church bullets to run you out. Devil come to trust and run, so don't come. Right. And they're coming with their own agenda. Uh -huh. So there's no place for those who are timid or who lack enthusiasm. They're not going to do it. Oh, they got me my body to do it. All right. The truth is, courageous enthusiasm is essential for success in any kind of work. Mm -hmm. You can try to fake it till you make it, but until you really have a real sincere Enthusiasm for what you're doing is hard to find any success. Come on, Pastor. All right. Come on now. Paul told Timothy, shut up the gift that is in him. Uh -huh. He said, don't go run around like some folks going from place to place looking for a better church, a better pastor, a better uh -huh. life. Uh -huh. He said, you got what you want in you. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you uh -huh. God already give you everything you need, but you need to do it. Stir up what you need. And it's a gift you didn't earn. Yes. 
Also, Paul has the promise of life that is in Christ. And Christ has already defeated death. So you, when you have the promise of life in Jesus Christ, you have to wear it. Because whatever comes, it may take this life that we have, we are living to live again. Because we have eternal life. That's what he came for us to die for, to be rose for. So for God so loved the world that he gave and got another gift. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have other last life. Even if we leave this life, we just transition into a better life. Seems to me if we know we got better things ahead, why well, not to be so bogged down and scared and nervous about things down here? Things are going wrong because we're living wrong. We're talking wrong. We're walking wrong. Singing the wrong thing. So Paul says to Timothy and to the church, this is everything starts with prayer. Everything starts with prayer. If you want to see something happen, tell God about it. Everything starts with prayer. Paul let Timothy know that he's praying for him. I wonder if we pray for one another like we said we do. Or do we just get tell folks that to get them out of our Y'all gonna answer for you. <laughs> Paul is sincerely praying for Timothy. You know, even though he's in Rome and feels that in Timothy is in, 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 in Ephesus, Timothy, you know what from the church, folks. Paul says, I'm still praying for you without ceasing. That means continually praying. Paul started by letting Timothy know that he was praying for him. And it's good to know that when you're going through whatever you're going through, that somebody who's in trust with God is praying for you. I tell you, sometimes we don't know what to say, but God's Spirit always knows what to say. And I'm glad that when I was down in the valley of the crisis, somebody around my left was praying for me. Every now and then, I to tell somebody, somebody prayed for me. Uh, I'm so glad they had me on my mind, on their mind, took a little time to pray for me. He said, I'm praying for you. What an encouragement to know that the great apostle was praying for him. Paul, who knew Timothy's weakness and his problems, was able to pray definitely with a real burden on his heart. In other words, he wasn't just praying, saying things. He was passionately praying for God to give Timothy what he needed to endure and go quick in the face of dangerous circumstances or evil folk. He just praying that God's spirit would continue to sustain Timothy through the tough times. Don't you know that happens when some spiritual person is praying fervently for you? Not just for those who are in Christ, but those who don't even know Christ. That's why we're worried about me anyway. That's why the church is empty, because we worry about paying bills and doing this and that. We don't worry about saving souls. We don't worry about saving souls. The church will fill up. I'm a whole lot of lost souls. I think I didn't hear this. A whole lot of lost souls roaming around out there. It's stolen cars, doing all kinds of stuff. All right, all right. We ought to be burning. <laughs> Look for the other folks again. They may be giving you too. You got to be praying for them. These folks seek Jesus and pray for them. He knew Timothy's problem. Paul was praying for Timothy with compassion. All right. Get this. Compassion and concern. And what I really want to know. How concerned are we today? Come on, Pastor. About the Lord's business. About the Lord's work. About the flame, the, the gift that is in us. How, how really concerned are we about that? Because when you're concerned about something, I know I'm, I've been living a long time. When you're concerned about something, you'll do something about it. Come on, Pastor. But I know my people, when we're concerned about something, I want to talk about something. Well, right now, now. And try to find somebody to blame. Right. I'm thinking that. This is the same way that we ought to be praying for one another with compassion and concern. And this is the way that we should be praying for lost souls right here in our community, but not only right here, but all over this world. We ought to be praying for lost souls because that would be a great harvest. 
Come on, soon them folk. Think like that. I'm gonna sign with them. The folk is just going on like yeah, that, that's Jim. That, that's Jim over there. But soon they will be you over here. Amen. All right. When we are discouraged and our faith seems weak, the place to begin is with prayer and especially intercession for people who are lost. It's good to pray for those who are in Christ because we have difficulties every day like everybody else. But it's even more important that we take an intercession passing the prayer for people who are lost. And when I say people who are lost, people who do not love, both the love and the salvation that is freely given through faith in Jesus Christ by God's amazing grace. Yes, remember, it is the will of God that people be redeemed. I read the other day in a good book. The Bible says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And some count slackness, but his long suffering toward us he knows every time we miss Sunday school. He knows every time we miss church. He knows every time you ain't go to part rehearsal. He ain't know all the things that you've done, but he's long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But if they don't get to see it, they're going through us who say we say. All right, all right. Somebody help me out. Oh, they're going to get to know him. Yeah. If we don't share the good news, how's it going to get shared? We don't let them know that God will bless those that trust in Him. How many ever know? He wants everybody in. Amen. You want to build the church up? You like Lucy when they're singing about, let your light shine. So you can work for Him. Have to look at some good works. And then go and follow the Father in Him. Don't look at me, preachers and sinners, like I said, it has to be the Lord. And I tell you, Amen. Because we have to have been for the Lord on my side. I don't know where I'd be. I know where I could have been. Know where I should have been. Know where I would have been. But he loves me. Thank you. Amen. Doesn't he love you? He loves me. So when I speak of his love, fill me with his peace and his joy. They're all through the spirit. Part of the gift that is in us. But if you don't pray, you can't keep that thing going. Yeah. 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 Going, you, you, you start burning out. Second thing, Paul expresses this confidence in Timothy. Even though things were going rough, Paul knew that in the end God would uh, bring Timothy through. No matter what we're going through, I'm fully confident for those who hang on and hang in there, God will uh, bring you to a great end. Paul. Paul did not think, when he talked about Timothy Tears, he did not think that Timothy Tears were evidence of failure or insincerity. Paul was sure, as he said in the letter, that Timothy's faith was genuine and sincere, and that his faith would see him through in spite of the troubles that he was facing. Sometimes trouble comes just so that our faith can grow. Uh -huh. Not just our faith, but our faith in God will grow. So instead of becoming afraid and complaining and antagonistic and attacking one another, all to join together on one accord and just thank God for what he's already done. Praise God for what he's doing. Thank him even for the storm. Even when the rain is falling and the bills are rolling and the sea is catching up, I don't worry because the captain of the sea is the captain of my soul. If he can make the wind and the waves behold, he can make you and me. He can make us behave as well. Speak to the wind. It's stop. Wind behaves. Behave. Speak to us and we go to Ecuador.
It has to be the captain of your soul. Yes, Not only will he make all those other things ahead, guess what? He'll make us behave. Yes, what I really like about it, Marshall, he makes not even be behave. Don't come at me with hatred and mean, well, mean, but out of me. You've got to work out for my good and God's will. Yes, to the point.
Timothy's heritage was a great one. First of all, he was raised in a godly home and then trained by a wonderful apostle. And after that, given great opportunities for serving the Lord. Don't you know that one of the great missions of the church and the greatest mission is to make disciples. In other words, train people to go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that's dying and desperate for it. Paul knew that Timothy cared and was concerned about lost people. Now that I'm beyond concern today, not just those that love us, but even the unlovable, because that's what we were at some point in our lives. Paul knew Timothy was sincere in caring about lost people. God cares and God is concerned about lost people. So what then is our focus? Do we really pray about and pursue what God loves or what we do?
Timothy, I know about all your problems, uh, but all you gotta do is stand the plane. Uh, and God alright, y'all. Uh, some of y'all don't know about the fireplace, uh, but when the wood gets to running low, uh, they can cut off those killing they call it. Uh, and put that killing in there uh, to get the flame back to sparking. Uh, some of you folks uh, need to go out and find some of them tree limbs uh, and cut through some killing. Uh, Yeah. Uh -huh. 